Hey, welcome back. This is uh, Captain Ron, Ron Sgerrows. Ron Sgerrows. Uh, today I'd like to discuss some of the uh, common mistakes that airplane pilots get themselves into situations where uh, creates a problem and lots of times it ends up in an accident or an incident. First of all, when you when you go to the airport and you get in your jar plane and get ready to take a flight, you want to make sure that uh, you do a good pre-flight and you got adequate fuel. And also, you, you want to uh, evaluate the condition of yourself. How do you feel? Are you, are you fatigued? Uh, sometimes when you get a cold or headache, you take over-the-counter medicine that would uh, hinder your your thinking process uh, and just because you can drive a car that you feel you can drive a car safely that doesn't mean you can fly a gyroplane safely so uh, those are very important factors before you even start your flight there's traffic uh, gyroplane 724 Juliet Foxtrot lining up and waiting uh, for departure runway 01 Cersei first mistake uh, 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 some of the gyroplane pilots do is if there's a crosswind and they got a, ride, a wide runway, I'm checking traffic here, it's all clear, uh, they'll try to take off diagonally on the runway. That, that's highly not recommended. Uh, you need to get crosswind takeoff and landing experience with a certified flight instructor to make sure you're comfortable doing that. But do not do not take off diagonally or land diagonally on a runway. You're just inviting a lot of problems. Okay, we're going to line up on the center line of the runway. And go through the checklist. Searching traffic, Aeropad, CP Fox, Charlie, which? Hey, we're all down here at runway one. Right that. And we're going to talk about the pre-rotation again and again and again. It's a very critical part of taking off on your first takeoff. You've got to get plenty of rotor RPM before you move the cyclic back and apply power. The blades are very flexible at low RPM. You need to get them spinning, create centrifugal force to substantiate the uh, headwind, the wind in your face. All right, we're going to crank it up to 225. Release, count of three, stick back. Now the stick all the way back, add a little power. This is the phase one of the... Uh, stick is back, phase one of your, of your takeoff. And you add power till the nose comes up. Okay, now you can still get in trouble with blade flap. If you lower the nose too much, which you have to lower it a little bit to get airspeed, reduce that drag. If you lower it too much, you get too much ground speed, airspeed. And then before you know it, you pull the stick back, you're in trouble with blade flap and the rollover. That's the second mistake. All right, always want to climb out at the recommended climb speed, manufacturing recommends, in this case, it's 60 miles an hour. And flying a charter plane takes a lot of repetition. If a certified flight instructor signs you off at 10, below 10 hours, below 10 hours of flight instructions, you're going to possibly, uh, there's a high percentage that you're going to be a uh, statistic. Don't forget you got rotor blade management there. You got a blade spinning on your head. You got a propell propeller pushing in your back here. So you, you got to coordinate both the thrust and the drag. There's your traffic, uh, job plan uh, close in the left. Crosswind, runway 150. Alright, as far as how 
difficult it is to learn to fly a gyroplane. Well, I, I usually compare it to an airplane and a helicopter. It's easier, it's, it's easier than a helicopter and a little more difficult than an airplane. There's the traffic. Uh, the other gyroplane left downwind for runway 130. All right, we're up at altitude, we're gonna level off. Now, if you want to descend, when you're ready to descend, you throttle, but you first have to reduce the throttle. If you push the cyclic forward with a lot of throttle, you're just gonna gain a lot of airspeed, and then the faster the gyroplane goes, the more sensitive the controls are, especially the, the cyclic. Throttle controls the altitude. Reduce the throttle first. It's a combination of cyclic and throttle. Usually whenever you, you make a control response in one the cyclic, you got to make a, a response and change in the throttle. Okay, up at, up at this altitude, you can afford to go slow. You can slow the aircraft down by moving the cyclic to the rear a little bit, like I'm doing at this point, and you notice the airspeed's down to 50. And I've illustrated this in, in my prior videos, but uh, we're going to talk about it again here. We're at 40. Now, that, the air, general planes won't stall like airplanes, but you get on the backside of the power curve, get too slow, you can, you're can you going to mush into the ground. So the result is the same. You're going to hit the ground uh, a little harder than you really want to. All right, traffic looks clear. There's your traffic. Yellow jar plane close in, let's say, short final, runway one, sir. Another mistake jar planes pilots make, when they're coming in for a landing, they get too slow. They're, they're busy looking at traffic, which is good. Looking at the runway, coordinate the turn, checking the airspeed. And by the way, these instruments are a reference. You just look at them occasionally. You keep your eyes outside the cockpit looking for uh, planes and uh, aircraft and birds. Okay, now I'm going to turn on final here, and I'm going to intentionally slow down show you what happens, uh, the slower you go, the more power you're going to need to maintain control of your sink rate. There's the traffic, uh, jump lines on a short final for runway one. Sir. Here again, you don't try to land diagonally on the runway. Now, there's a crosswind, so I'm going to line it up with the runway instead of uh, keeping it pointed into the crosswind. So you looked at my, the, the, the yaw string indicator up here, it tells you the wind's coming from my right. All right, if I slow down, see I'm doing 50. I normally come in at 60 with 3,000 RPM on the engine. I've got another 100 RPM on the engine. Uh, I'm at, I'm at 4,000, excuse me, 4,000 instead of 3,000. All right, now I'm going to, and they failed to notice the, how slow they're going. They're looking at the runway, and that gets them to a landing too slow, and they're going to bounce and possibly tip over. Uh, and another problem they may have, another mistake, was they come in, they're offset on the runway like I am. Okay, you, you don't want to try to move over to the center. You want to land, straighten it out, parallel the runway, and land right where you're at. You don't want to make any sudden moves when you're this close to the ground. Okay, I'm going to abort this landing. Take off. Sir, traffic, you are planning to avoid the landing in one. Climbing out, zero one, sir.
Okay, uh, that, that does it for this clip. Uh, appreciate you watching. Thank you.